Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Bowlology Report. Damien Fleming here. Very excited. Very excited about special guest. He's a man or he's a former Australian test cricketer. He's treasurer of the fast bowling cartel. <laughs> former Cricket Australia board member. He's got a master's in business because he's smart. He's an ex-fast bowler. He's got three lovely children, lovely wife, Lindsay. Uh, one of the most loved teammates of, uh, of our era. Uh, and a man named by Wisdom as the person, the cricketer, who saved Test Match Cricket back at Edgebaston in 2005, <laughs> Michael Caswitz. Thanks for joining us. Well, Hello, mate. Flam. How are you? Thank you for the uh, invitation. Yeah, mate. Thanks for joining us. Now, straight away, are you comfortable with that claim that you are the man who saved mm. Test Match Cricket back at Edgebaston all the years ago in 2005? Well, I think it's appropriate, really. It's 16 years ago that um, uh, being an Ashes year, of course, this summer, that we need to um, bring it up again, the fact that I single-handedly saved Test cricket. So plenty of the questions I went out to social media um, and it was I, I was really, um, really enjoyed the responses. Mm. You, know, you know, really, you, you generate a lot, such as your popularity and... And obviously, your skill as a fast bowler, um, not so much in batting, but... Um, oh, hang on. Hang on. Did you know, Did well, take us through those moments, uh, uh, that split second, um, two to win, uh, mm. Harmison's running in, um, and, and how quickly was it, was it? Did you just know you're out and just, um, just straight away, I've got to walk? Well, in, a, in the flurry, you know, I suppose instinct takes over. Um, yeah, you practice plenty of short balls, get away, you wear it and all that. But just in the moment, it felt like it rose off a length that was a lot tighter and instinct hands sort of went up um, like that. And I like to think it was good coaching or practice, but it meant that in that moment, I was able to actually drop my right hand off the bat at the time and it flicked the right hand, which happened to be off the bat and of yes. course we all know that law 34.1 mcc laws of cricket um clearly states that's not out but did you know instinctively <laughs> not out but you were thinking for world cricket we dominated the poms for 25 years um test cricket's at its strongest it was the biggest mm -hmm. rating ashes series ever and yeah. you were a part of it did you just think this is bigger than me this is bigger than the country. <laughs> I actually had a guy in India. I'm happy to be in a, in a hotel lobby in India, and a guy came up to me and just said, "He says, oh, hey, Michael Kasparovich, you know, thank you, thank you for saving Test cricket." And I said, "Oh, how do we manage that, mate?" And he, and this is obviously in India, and he's loving his cricket. And he just said, um, "He said, well, if you had have got those runs with Brett Lee, you would have been two 0 up in the series, and Australia would have gone and won it, and then Test cricket would be boring. But your innings actually saved it, and and the." The classic part about it, Flame, is that um, <laughs> you pointed out that the there was junior participation rates were up by thirty percent in both countries. There was a DVD. They're buying bats. Rate. They're buying bats, mate. The, the greatest test was the DVD was sold for I think eleven pound ninety nine or thirty thousand copies of that. There was uh, all the England players all got MBEs, including the bus driver. And <laughs> if I was the guy who was single handedly responsible, what do you reckon happened to me? Are you knighted? I got, I got dropped again. So that, that was it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so world cricket's happy. Um, the Queen's happy. She's knighting people and, mm. and you just get dropped by your country. Oh, look, I, and I, what did Don Bradman say? Leave the game in a better place than when you entered that. So, uh, what tick. was the conversation with uh, John Buchanan and, and Ricky Ponting? Team balance when you got dropped? Um, <laughs> I, I can't recall. I just thought, that, uh, no, actually, no, McGrath came back. That's what it was. So that and gets even, me to I, my next question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And we know yeah. you're a bit of a prankster in your day in the Australian team. Mm. How did you actually get the soccer or rugby ball in the line <laughs> of McGrath running in so that he would do his ankle and get yourself into the team? I actually had nothing to do with that you at all. Liar. And no, no, no. And and the reason why um, was that um, well, we obviously it's got McGrath. You don't want him stepping on it. I was trying to get um, Binger to step on it. And, but no, no, no. <laughs> Not the case at all. Um, I I tell you what, how it worked for me. Um, and the view was really weird because I 
in the day, and I, I don't know what when it changed. Maybe you can remember, but I, as a 12th man, I had to mark the run-ups of the other bowlers. Yep, yep. And I don't can't I can't in I can't work out when that changed. Anyway, you just used to be responsible for your own. Anyway, I'm having to mark out you know someone's number with the tape, and I've got it all there, and, and I'm down on virtually on my knee, you know, doing this. And next thing, I'd glance to to the left and seen McGrath down in a screaming heap. And uh, all of a sudden, there was, I remember John, and I think Punter was there at the time, they started laughing at him, thinking, ah, ha, ha, get up, mate, get up. And then you saw him just, he couldn't. And then all of a sudden, there was just some distress going on over there. But at the right side over here with the England team, where they were warming up, I um, was watching them, and they all of a sudden, you could sort of see them. They all of a sudden, all of a sudden whoa, what's going on here? Like, McGrath's yeah, so out. Mm. And so I had actually had uh, Merv. Merv was the uh, selector on duty with his uh, tour groups. Anyway, he's come over to me. And when that happened, I thought, right, let's see what's going on here. I realised it's happening here because Sean Tate was actually uh, sore or injured or something wasn't quite right. They weren't going to play an extra spinner um, in McGill. Um, and it was one of those ones just thinking, oh, I'm a chance here. I'm a real chance. <laughs> anyway, Merv, <laughs> Merv come up and says to me, Merv says, he said, oh, Casper, um, obviously you've seen what's happened with McGrath. He's out. Um, you're right to go. And I looked at Merv and I said, mate, that's bloody lucky, that. He said, what? I said, oh, lucky I got in before 3 a.m. last night. It was just, uh, <laughs> it could have been awesome. Not the case. It didn't happen. It was early in bed because you might just get a chance and might just get a chance to play a, a test match and single-handedly save test cricket. Exactly. Hey, and what about your decision to force... Ricky Ponting, the captain, to bowl first on the flattest pitch <laughs> ever. Why did you do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you just want to bowl every time. It's, we bowl first. And, yeah, then you can sit down and relax and let the batsmen do their job. But we know all that. No, that never happens. Um, what I'll was your vibe? Know. Did you look at the pitch? and Do you remember much chat about it? I mean, generally, it's a, you're back first. But Having played a fair bit of county cricket, and a few of the guys had, um, that edge baston pitch normally does a bit. It's normally got plenty of bounce, and which is why edge baston used to attract Wacker Eunice for many years. Um, yeah. Alan, Donald. Bounce, Alan Donald used to just do that. It was the bounciest track in, in the UK. There happened to be a mini cyclone ripped through Birmingham a couple of days earlier. And I kid you not, there was actually floods. There was all that. Yeah. So we've turned up and thought, right, this will be interesting. Um, the wicket generally bounces, it carries. It's, and we've turned up and looked at it. And it did look grey. It didn't have, you know, it had sort of a good grass, but it just looked a little different. But not, not grey doesn't excite me as a fast bowler. Grey's not green. No, wood. no we like green. Green's yeah. my favourite colour. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, I look and and really out of that decision, it was incredible, wasn't it? Whereby, I think it was there was a, a, a oh, like almost a mantra of Australian captains where no one. Yeah, like you, you just you bring the toss and, and, and bowl. Uh, we toss and bat every single time from there. No, well, I was to. with a, a, a tour group with Merv. He was doubling up chairman oh, yeah. selectors and chairman of thing, and and that first uh, that first two hours was 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 nuts, wasn't it? Like it was just aggressive fields, like you do, and and it just didn't do anything. But fast forwarding, so mm. you walk out, <clears throat> sixty two yep. runs needed. Um, you're in pretty good form. I mean, you, you, you're coming out on a king pair. Did, did no. that add? <laughs> that wasn't the case. You made a first ball duck in the first innings. Like, what do you mean a king pair? Well, a king pair um, is when you make two golden ducks, isn't it? Don't know. I've oh, never geez. heard that. I've never heard oh, that oh, before. Oh, ever. okay. I'll bring that I, only up. Played, I only played for 20 years, but yeah, but that's fine. Yep, yep. So you obviously weren't thinking about that, but um, no, I wasn't. You know, you know, <laughs> As soon as you get out there, um, you know, what do you think? You and Binger would be probably pretty relaxed, wouldn't you? You're just thinking, well, we'll, we'll, we'll let it go. We're, we're behind the eight ball here against a, <laughs> let's be honest, a, 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 a very, very good English attack. Mm. Uh, and that, yeah, it was incredible. It, 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 what happened going out with Binger and the noise? Um, yeah, the, the crowd were right in anyway, we went up to Binger and sort of smiled at him and, um, and said, right, mate, well, you know, we just got to keep, obviously, the heads and nose and toes, I suppose, were, was what they were looking to do and try and get us out yeah. every single ball. And 
one of the things I remember saying to Binger, and we said, just let's have some fun, mate. Just you know, see how we go and how deep we can get this and just have fun. And it was incredible because they were. Every ball was either the nose or the toes. And we were scoring. We've been scoring at four or five runs and over. <laughs> Um, <laughs> not so through blazing cover drives or hook shots. When well, I'll think- tell you what happened. Well, the whole way through, I think um, <laughs> there was a short ball from, uh, I don't know, it might have been Flintoff, and I sort of leant back and gave a bit of a cut, you know, feeling quite comfortable with that sort of, um, and it And Great Simon bang. Jones ran in from third man and spilt it. Bang. So, you know, oh, right, maybe that's it. Maybe we're away here. And it was incredible because... Um, we were just scoring runs. The runs were coming, and then all of a sudden, I just remember it was really distinct. This when um, Flintoff was bowling, and he's bowled to Binger. I was at the non-strikers end. He's bowled to Binger, and it's hit the foot marks down the leg side. And Garant Jones didn't have a chance because then it just pinged off and for four buys, it went from thirteen runs to single figures, nine. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, from all the crowd, the noise, it just went silent. Because I think right then everyone realised, holy shit, oh, yeah. you know, that the maybe you know, Australia's a chance here. And even then, the whole way through, in, every over or in between balls, we'd sort of walk down, have a smile at each other, and you know, like just keep loving it, just keep having fun here. And shit, we don't know what, where we can get to. Yeah, and man, I was in the crowd, and it mm. was sort of like, oh my god, we're going to beat the Aussies. And then it was just this gradual change to, oh, we can't lose it from here. Yeah. So it, it was it was amazing atmosphere, but you know just to see the you know what we love so much about Test match cricket, and and the actual ball you talked about, and yeah. what about the shot again? I just replayed it. I mean, it, it almost looked like you, you'd gone the the Dilshan scoop before there was, was a Dilshan. It was almost the it could have been <laughs> the Casper scoop. That could have I, been you. It, I could have been, absolutely. And I think it would have been a hit. Uh, certainly it's uh, what, Rebel Sport. Do you sell a bat or, you, oh, maybe, it, or, or a glove? Maybe we need glove shapes in different Once again, different you're almost to... there. That could have been, you know, all the T20 players now, we go, oh, Casper, yeah, no. you know, handy number 11, high score of uh, just 25 in Test Match Cricket. But he had the 360 degrees. He had the, the Casper <laughs> scoop. I would, actually, you're right. It could have been good. But I think it was, it was wonderful example of just those fine how how fine those moments are from obviously good days great days or just the the, the days that don't work and, and even that whole series to be honest um to have the australian team i think it was even a, a t on the last day of the fifth test it was still in the balance there was a chance yeah. that we still could do it and it was like double extra time and that's why it was the greatest series because it, it just dragged it out. The moments throughout the whole, every test match were just extraordinary. Well, it, was and, like um, a, yeah. it was like a hundred miles an hour, the whole series, wasn't it? Like it was just insane. Yeah. And, and was, what, was, about, was, yeah. what about the iconic moment that you also missed out at, you know, Freddie goes to Binger, but where, yeah. where were you? <laughs> you should have gone in there, ran past Binger and shook, because Freddie's so famous. I mean, it, it could have been you in that iconic it's, Team, you know, sports yeah. moment. I, yeah, the thing was, I think I had people come up to me and said, Oh, you know, that photo, you know, what, what did what did Andrew Flintoff say to you? You know, I must have, and I said, uh, I was down the other end and no one gave a <laughs> shit about me. <laughs> I think I think Freddie might have been saying suck shit, mate. That's we won all. I don't, I don't know what he said. But it's but, the um, perception. You've always talked about it. It's the perception. I have a- absolutely. And even I'll tell you one. One little takeaway from that whole series, and maybe my my, my uh, the lens I've always seen the Australian cricket team has been really unique. So ten years, um, I was in that team and spent time in and all, but also out. Thirteen times, um, I'm pretty sure I was told once that <laughs> I was actually dropped from the team. I actually find my way back in. But one of the things I saw is my unique view I had of the team was um, the people and yeah. the way the the behaviours or what they spoke about and expectations and and it really it's a bit like your own kids you go away for a week when they're really young you come home and then things change you know it's, there's new words or new things they're doing yeah and so coming in and out of that team within the, in the all the individuals that we all know so well and the environment but i reckon that ashes series was the one time in that 10-year period when in that dressing room the word luck was used and the reason why yeah. i'm framing it like that is that 
the only team that talks about luck is the loser because you, yep. you, you need luck. Winners never, you know, celebrate, yeah, how lucky were we? And everyone, and that's that really we were because there was, you know, uh, bad decisions or, you know, Simon Kadich getting LBW with pitching that far down leg or or there's, you know, drop catches, great catches, injuries to gun players, all those things that sort of you feel like when you're losing are conspiring against you. Um, but when you're winning, you're just, you're on. Yeah, it was interesting. Someone uh, around the party there, you know, I think it was their first trip. You know, I remember him saying it was interesting how a, a great team can still lose confidence quite quickly. You know, it's yeah. still such a – and and then, you know, that mm. the language changes, as you said. It's not, we're going, it's not we're going to get better or, you know, uh, yeah, we'll change. You know, uh, we're just having bad luck. Um, body language is such a strong thing as well. So – you know what yeah. else? You know what? Yeah, you know what else was really different about that one trip was because um, there was maybe it was the first time where we had sort of families um, come and stay because all the time away, um, you know, with accommodation. I, I think remember Gilly Adam Gilchrist. Um, his family had stayed needed a bit more room in another apartment away from the hotel and the hotel team hotel. Um, but what was kind of really weird was that it became like a workplace in that. You'd go to work in the morning, you catch the bus, have breakfast with your family in the hotel. And sure, it's not every day you're doing a buffet. Um, <laughs> but you end up you end up going to work, getting on the bus, going to work with your, you know, your colleagues. And then, but at the end of the day, you'd actually get on the bus, you'd come back to the hotel. And we were almost encouraged. There was sort of a feeling like we should, you know, like spend a bit less time together, like sort of just spend time with family. Yeah. And and what was weird about it was that there was internal, there was a little bit of oh, some bickering on some parts, the partners, um, and there's people were sort of like treading a bit carefully. It was just a bit distant. And the yeah. one thing, the one thing in hindsight, and certainly, you know, even then at the time thought, no, no, because we're under pressure, you've got to pull in close. That's when you just needed everyone just to really pull in tight and be really close and and. And you know, like I said, together and, and and battle your way out. So that was that was in professionalism, I suppose, and the, the journey we've all had. It was something that was it was just a different different stage. And I guess it's it's gone gone a, a whole other level now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, coming into the team now, you um, you know that's all you know is your family around, and they're away mm. so long. So good luck to them. Hey, Casper, one of the reasons I got you on today, um, you know, you're chairman of Sports Corp. Um, can you tell you got an exciting smart ball um, yeah. launching? Can you tell us about you know your involvement there and and going forward with this ball? Yeah, it's it's look in my twenty years of player and ten in administration in cricket, um, it's the coolest bit of sport tech I ever say. And the reason <laughs> being that it actually gives you feedback, gives the player feedback. So instead of it being you know um, a device or capturing data for the trainer or the umpires, or even the broadcast. Um, this is for the player because it's getting feedback. So what we've able to do um, with Kookaburra... So just quickly, that, yeah, yeah, sorry, you're going... Yeah, with Kookaburra, Kookaburra yeah. what we've done is we've actually partnered with them um, and developed a smart cricket ball, replaced the cork rubber compound that sits inside the ball that the ball's built around. And in the Kookaburra turf ball at this stage, which is the, the best ball, um, we've got an accelerometer, a magnetometer, um, there's a battery... Um, inside um, the case that we've developed and all the testing we've done through the University of Queensland, um, which was the protocol that Cricket Australia put in place of just absolutely belting this ball and um, to try and break it, and we they haven't we haven't. So it's been a look classic startup story. Um, great taking a concept to a product and then into the consumer stage right now. So it's I'm really enjoying it. It's been three years. It's been wow. a hell of a journey. Um, and and through COVID action. as well. Well, that's where the hell of a journey really took over because when you're trying to raise money um, for the business to save it, um, managed to find a, a UK company called Velocity Capital. The guys there are fabulous, awesome to, to deal with. Um, and we've actually done we've done really well getting through last year and start of this year to the point where we're actually going to be at the Caribbean Premier League um, oh, and the wow. ball is going to be used in the broadcast. So August 26 um, this year, it's in the CPL, 
It's actually we've we've also getting the ball used uh, for the Brisbane Premier League, which is the amateur um, league up here in, in Brisbane. It starts on Sunday. Um, I know that uh, KO is broadcasting two of their matches uh, on the Sunday, uh, back after each other, and streamed through. Uh, by Frogbox, Interact Sport, and My Cricket um, as well. So it's really exciting. The way I sort of frame what we do and the reason why our purpose, if you like, is we want to empower the athlete. We want to engage the players, all players at all levels, but also and mainly is excite the fans because they're going to see stuff you know, from the fan level. They're going to see stuff they've never seen before. What we pick up is the speed out of the hand, yep. speed pre-bounce and also speed post-bounce those three markers, the revolutions of the ball out of the hand and revolutions post-bounce. But what is, I reckon, the coolest one under the radar at the moment um, is power. So power of the ball out of the hand. So on release, how many watts is the ball coming out at? And, and so what, what does that translate to? Are you trying to work out, you know, potentially you know, that's someone who bowls a heavy ball or um, they're the quicker ones? Or that's, Well, no, well, speed, you've got obviously the radar gun for speed and you've got the, the deceleration, I suppose. But for me, one of the things was giving some context to all these fabulous terms in cricket. Yeah. You know, the, the heavy ball is precisely it. And so now we can actually put um, you know, a metric around it. You know, so here's the data that says that, you know, Riley Meredith bowled, you know, that ball at 53, you know, watts, you know, out of the hand, 1,000 watts out it's of the hand. It's also interesting, you know, like even um, from from boy, young boys and girls uh, up to the elite level, they all want to know how quick they bowl. So I'm assuming this will be as accurate as anything. And and consistency because, you know, working mm. or being a commentator, you know, you, you, you commentate in some competitions and you go, nah, the radar gun is a lot quicker in this competition there. Um, <laughs> for spinners who don't spin the ball, you know, yep. is it because they've got low revs? And even, you know, our old pastime swing bowling, yep. um, you know, we talk about that coming down the back of the ball is really important yep. as opposed to pushing it out. Um, yep. You know, we might start to get some feedback on, because um, they're the two arts that I think uh, we're probably lacking a bit in Australia is is, is a, a, a group of spin bowlers and swing bowlers, and, and maybe yeah. this ball might, might help us unearth a few. Yeah, I think that's what's the most exciting part about it is that um, for the first time we're able to pick up new data. And, and when I say data, um, I suppose for a player, for an athlete, an elite level, you've got a coach telling you that looks good and telling you how to do it. You've also got video. You can watch that. But the part, I think, for us as players, um, and it's hard to describe this to anyone who hasn't done it, but it's feel. It's yeah. all about feel. And yeah. so when you've got these different sources of being able to see it on video, um, then you've got the coach telling you. But at the same time, you have some data to back up the feel that you got with the ball coming out. To me, that's, that's the most exciting part. And as you pointed out, I think that's fine at the elite level. Um, and what we're trying to do is get the elite guys using it and being kookaburra. Um, the balls are used uh, in, or certainly in Australia, but also every white ball competition around the world. IPL, ICC events, it's all the Kookaburra turf, white, um, white turf ball. But more importantly, I think then it's if it's in the broadcast because they're getting better, they're improving, they, we're loving that. The sports science loves that. If they're using it, then it's actually selling the message to every single player. So my big goal and dream for this business is to make it affordable, but most of all, accessible to every single player. So What a, ca what a so, catchphrase. You like it? I like it. It should be a marketing, but no. But this is the whole thing. It's, it's, it's all about that accessibility because, as you point out, it doesn't matter how old you are, you want to see how fast you're bowling. And if all of a sudden, yeah. you know, buying a $250, you know, $500 radar, yeah, that's not going to happen to any club cricket or junior cricket. Buying even the revolutions to see that out of a fifty thousand dollar you know TrackMan machine <laughs> isn't going to do that either. So that's the beauty of it. And more importantly, it's about seeing what you've done when getting that feedback, even for my fourteen year old son. But more importantly, it's about comparing yourself with your mates, yeah, your family, your friends, um, and even I think for as far as talent recognition, one of the things we can do we can actually identify um, yeah where the balls are around the planet. Um, and say the revolution. So what one of the things I'm really excited about doing is this ball being in India 
um, getting to tier not one and two and eight, 10, 15 cities, but out to the tier 50 cities. Yeah. Um, and you're going to kind of find some wonderful stories. It's going to be an opportunity to change some people's lives. I really do feel that. Uh, it sounds exciting and good luck with that. We'll be keeping in touch with the progression. Um, yeah. Now, Casper, back to your career to a degree. I've uh, got a few little questions here, but it's a tough one off the top of your head. But can you describe <laughs> your career and mainly your bowling in your stages from, from 17 to 35? Yeah. Yep. Um, Development. and Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think, um, I think we learn by doing is the sort of the, the theme overall. And I know when you're young, um, yeah, you, you steam in, bowl quick because you can. You swing the ball because you can. And one of the things that I had, um, you know, I was even told, I think at one stage early on with by Trevor Owens when he dropped me, I think it must have been the second or third time. Um, <laughs> he said, Casper, we see you as a wicket taker, but you go for runs. And I hadn't been in the, in the one-day team. So I made it my sort of like goal for the next two seasons in domestic cricket. I think it was the FAI Cup back then or it might have been the Well, it could have been one of those. Anyway, um, I remember for two years I made damn sure that I didn't go over 50 once yeah. in two years. And you're opening the bowling, you're bowling first over and you're bowling last over. And so then I could go back to him and say, listen, this is how it works. Of which straight away, and if you use the word perception, he said, oh, actually, oh. and then surprise, surprise, I think in the next one-day series, they end up starting picking me again. Um, <laughs> what I, what I might have might have just forgotten to tell him was a couple of those innings, I might have bowled six overs for about 48. <laughs> 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 but he didn't need it's to all, know. It's all about He didn't need to know that, did he? No, exactly. What, what about like your, your stock ball as a mm. you know teenager compared to uh, uh, you know just your, your last stage with the Australian team because yep. you, 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 I, I thought you evolved and adapted you know yep. fast out swingers then you know near the end you made yourself really adaptable you know that off cutter yep. seamer reverse swing was had played a big part so yep how I, I did think... you make that 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 um, change. Well, I think, um, as I said, learn by doing. And I reckon the biggest change for me was um, well, being out of the Australian career team. So not being picked and I'm out. I mean, I'm trying to, and, and at times you try too hard. And that's, that's just natural. Yeah. You go, I'm only going to try. And, and it was a game against South Australia. I remember this because I got dropped. Um, yeah, it was actually just after my test debut, actually. Yeah, test debut. So it was the first time I was dropped. Um, <laughs> was I, um, we played and I didn't get a wig at the first test. I didn't get a wig at the second test in oh. Sydney. And then we're playing New South Wales, Queensland, New South Wales. And it was virtually a bowl off, if you like, um, full strength at the Gabba. I remember Mark Taylor was there and Aussie captain, all that sort of stuff. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to get stuck into you. And that's, you know, that's how we're going to do it. And that innings, I went out and because they were talking about Bic had been getting wickets for Queensland and, and I'm sort of, you know, I'm in the team not getting wickets. So I remember. Coming in, and there was, you know, the nick that just fell short of the, you know, of the slips, or the LBW that, you know, wasn't out. And then it was like, but all of a sudden, Bick was getting a few. And just, I just found myself trying so hard. And anyway, yeah. sure enough, I ended up at the end of the game. Um, look, unfortunately, I have a picture. We've gone with Bick. Said, okay, great. No, good luck. Um, so I just remember that next game, we went down to South Australia and probably had a week or two to sort of get my head around all that. And I really simply, I simply, I just, I stopped and I, I stopped and I thought, what was I thinking? How was my mind before I played cricket for Australia? What was I thinking about? How did I do this? And getting fifty wickets a year in Shield cricket, you know, doing that a few times. And but what was I actually thinking? Or and the fact of the matter is, I was just out there having fun. Yeah, I was just out there, relaxed, having fun, and it was happening. Um, and then it was a moment. That was one of my first moments in my my bowling career where I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to go and have fun. And I think that really set me up for all those other times where I'm in the team, out of the team. Because you know what, if this is the last time in the Australian team, and I'm not you know, going to be the, the best player compared with who we got, but I've been given an opportunity. If this is the last time I'm here, I'm going to have that much fun. I'm That's a great it. philosophy too. And do you think in our time, um, and obviously before us, mm. you know, without fast bowling coaches, you actually had to self-coach, self-monitor. 
And I yep. reckon that's where mm. I got into trouble. You know, you pride yourself on being self-motivational and, um, you know, a good team yeah. player. But I found it, you know, if I was dropping a few percent, um, it's, ha- it's hard to self-monitor. Yeah. And all of a yeah. sudden it's 10% and you're in a bit of a slump. So, you know, did you did, yeah. were you able to self-monitor when you were starting to try too hard again and then to reinforce, no, I'm playing because it's fun? I, I got I got good at that because what I'd do, I'd, um, you just find yourself firing up too much um, and getting frustrated. Um, and that was, to me, that was the key. That was the, the sign going, okay, just chill it out now. And even games where I tried to fire up, you know, thinking I'm going to be a fiery fast bowler to the point where I was, you know, accused. Sometimes people would say, oh, Casper, you're too nice to be a fast bowler. Yeah. And it's like, no, 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 I've still got a stare. We're still walking down the wicket and getting in the batsman's face, but I don't need to sniff and snarl and do all that sort of stuff to get it because I knew that just threw me just a little bit out. And I've had actually oh, some coaches, even Wade Second in Queensland, you know, with a couple of bowlers, he'd said, oh, I should go and speak to Casper. And talking to them about that, you know, instead of just trying to be something you're not, or finding, I think that's what I said. Learn how you learn how it works for you was yeah. the key because for me it was it wasn't about you know running in a million miles an hour and bowling as fast as you could. It was all about keeping everything con- controlled and and ultimately that's why I used the term just having fun. And I think the journey, um, I'm sure that every single person that's gone through it, you find your own word or way yeah. to do that. And the word for me, it was fun. I don't know. What did, what did you use, Len? What was there? I reckon my consistency was um, I used to get in trouble um, if, if I was getting too anxious about what's going to happen in the future or too angry mm. backwards. Although yeah, yeah. you know that I did get quite angry at myself. <laughs> I, I just thought that was a better, better mm. um, zone to be in than just going through the motions. So I often, yeah. you know, tried to get myself going. So a bit better there. But my mantra was win the next ball. Yep. Yeah. When I was at yeah. my best, I just tried to win the next ball. Yeah. So that kept yeah. me in the now and I'd, I'd plan what I was going to do. And 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 probably um, uh, I, I tr- when I win the ball, keep a tally. Because once yeah. you win one ball, two balls, three balls, four balls, how do you think you're going? <laughs> yeah. Um, you're going well. At so that, at, at its simplest, that, that's what got me back on track. And that was the best part, I guess, about being a bowler is when you keep it simple like that because you, we had a, must have had a good union back in the day to bring it from eight balls and over down to six. <laughs> <laughs> because you've got to rest after six. It's like, hang on, I just, you know, I need a break. I think Rodney uh-huh. Hogg had a lot to do with that. He, he had he? Two, for na- two for none <laughs> off two overs at the Adelaide Oval and walked off. Well, and maybe that went to throw oh, yeah. the ball to him and he wasn't he there. Said, yeah. All right. Well, maybe, maybe that's what he's celebrating. Yeah, did he? He said asthma and also asthma. He's, an only ch- he's an only child. Didn't he pop another line out to um, Kim Hughes once? I think Carl Rackman tells a story in the Rebel Tour where he went off the field and Kim Hughes sent someone off and said, go and find him. Where, where's Rodney Hogg? Where's Hogg? Yeah. And what was the line? Something like, um, tell Kim Hughes that Rodney Hogg's dead. No, Rodney Hogg's passed away. He's passed away. <laughs> so Big Mocker had to run that out. <laughs> Hey, mate, just some quick other ones about your career. Uh, hmm. Best captain? I Look, I, I really enjoyed Steve Waugh. And the reason being that he was supportive. Uh, it's kind of nice when you're feeling, you know, really supportive and, and captains sort of backing you. Um, yeah. It's through that, you know, through a period of time. It correlates to sort of, I guess, performance as well. Um, and really, I think my even I try to explain this to someone once before around the Australian captains, it's, it's sort of, I suppose when Alan Border was captain, the best way I put it is Alan Border captain, he was the icon to a younger group of players when he captained. Then he had Mark Taylor come in, who was a peer of his group. So he was leading and sort of had all the resources of people around and mates and all that sort of stuff. So when Steve War became the captain, he was the icon to us, you know, younger group as well. When Ricky... Ponting came in, he was the captain to a peer group of all blokes and went to the academy with him and and known him for years. But then everyone left. And then he, his trans, his process, then he had to become the icon. He became automatically icon to a group of players. Um, And then when he left, you know, Michael Clark was that peer again. And then, you know, I suppose he was, he was sort of, you know, finding, finding the way that that he did it. But for me, yeah, for me, and under, 
under Steve Waugh, I really, you know, I really enjoyed that. But I've got to say my favourite captain, Adam Gilchrist. He was <laughs> India, 2004, when um, Ricky, I think, had a knee injury or something like that, but he was there. But we ended up winning the series over there, the first time for a thousand years. Um, and even, even that, coming back to your earlier question about whether the changes in your bowling, um, in the cricket, in the bowling context here, I, I really changed the way I bowled. So instead of bowling out swing and that sort of, I went over the, must have been about the 12th time I was dropped from the Australian team. Um, <laughs> I went to um, Glamorgan. I played cricket over in Glamorgan. So down in Sapphire Gardens. And it wasn't, it's not generally a fast bowler's first pick, no. but I'd never had first choice of ends no. or anything like that. <laughs> so I, um, so I, Went down there and, you know, it was a low, slow wicket. And it always had been. Um, the rest, and having played for other counties, you'd go down there and it was always grim. Jesus, grim down there in, in Carter. For, anyhow, I'm, I'm down there and I'm going to have fun. That was my whole yeah. mansion, my fun. But one of the things I did in, after trying to bowl out swingers and getting fat outside edges that had run down a third man, they'd never carry through the slips with the ball going away. So I thought... On a slow, low wicket, low shit eat wicket, I'm just going to hit the deck hard and we're going to get the ball coming back into off stump, straightening up and going back in, setting a field, so putting a man, two men back, so maybe even even a man forward a square leg um, on the fence, maybe a mid wicket as well, short mid wicket catching if they decide to flick off their, you know, off their legs. But you're not going any straighter than middle stump, but everything's yeah. really tight in that line. So I did that. A couple of years and had a lot of success. You know, I think you know not only did you know seventy or eighty wickets um, in the competition. I actually won the um, the Weatherall Award for the all rounder yeah. of first uh, of division uh, of the first division cricket, second division cricket, the all rounder of the year. How to go with? Yeah. Well, generally all rounders, it's both wickets and runs. So I end up scoring. I think it was about uh, eight hundred runs with a bat. Yeah. yeah. Don't look so surprised, mate. You got a don't, highest don't test so score at 25. How did. Nine, 97 first two? class. 97 first. Oh, 93 first class, sorry. For Division Australia, two, yeah, was anyway. it? Or I, I like hey. the wickets. But sorry, taking the mickey there. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> so a lot of the questions, sorry, keep going, uh, you know, that I asked on social mm. media were was about this 04 tour. So finish mm. off. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things, um, it was actually on the plane on the way over to India. Um, now, not that I was with um, Jason Gillespie, not that we were taking on any drinking records to India or anything like that. What, not sure. What, the, what did you get? What was your record? You'd, you'd be close to the record holder there, wouldn't you? Uh, I, I think I, I missed out by 50. <laughs> <laughs> From Booney. We, we, we weren't allowed, were we? Uh, they'd stop that. Yeah. Is that because there's no champagne um, for the bowlers down the back of the bus? Yeah. Yeah, it's, like hard, the it's hard back in economy, isn't it? I know. Like, yeah. Anyhow, um, so one of the things, um, having seen, I guess, and developed these skills, were obviously reverse swing after India the first time. Well, I went there in 1998. Um, and I'll, I'll come back to that. I think I'll come back after this. But when, when, we, when we turned up in India in 2004, it was the third time we'd gone there. We hadn't won a series. We came close. But we were doing what Australian teams had done so well. Bowl shorter length, outside off stump, and build pressure. And the execution of that plan is what has held Australians so well um, for so long um, and had the skill of it. So one of the things I just mused with um, with Dizzy, I said, I think reckon we do this differently. I reckon we play at their strength. We go straighter uh, in line, but we set fields accordingly because that man who's deep backward square or deep forward square even on the slower wickets. Um, having two men back, we can bang the pitch and force them on the back foot, looking for the hook shot on the back foot to try and catch them on the crease, the ball that doesn't quite bounce or hits them you know, on that off stump for an LBW. If they do get behind it and flick it, then we've got one short mid wicket to catch it. Yeah. If they get it past him, they're only one, running one run. Instead of a boundary, it's one run. You can make a So run. this is a total different line to the yep. couple of tours we went on. Absolutely. Outside off stump. Total Absolutely. Time. And the important thing is, I think, the discipline and skill that you guys showed, patience, but the, the field placement, that that mid-wicket, that, that, that player, you know, and, you know, with that mid-wicket in with two out, how many times did they try and hit it finer? 
Lakshman, and the interest, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And even uh, like Lakshman got out there because that's what he does. And even when he came out, he put two catches at midwicket. Yeah. And just, and just prey on his head because instinct means he's going to flick it. And even if he does, he gets one run. Um, one of the Even out of that whole tournament, what was um, the great result was that Raul Dravid didn't score a run. And he was bowled or LBW most times because what we did, you bowl straight a line to him and you'd leave cover, a little bit of a gap at cover. So all of a sudden he's trying to hit you through cover on a straight line with sort of half yeah. of that. So just little things like that was really designed and to, to mess with their head a bit because it wasn't how they played. And, and really that's the whole key when you're playing in India, when you're playing anywhere. The actual, the, 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 for any bowler, the premise, for 10, not only test cricket, but everywhere you play, it's about adjusting your skills to suit those conditions and the situation yeah. of the game. That's, that's the art of bowling. Plain and simple. And that's what we did. The execution was incredible. Obviously, having, you know, with McGrath doing McGrath um, was awesome and Dizzy was spectacular. And and the fact that Brett Lee, um, you know, wasn't in the no. in the team, didn't make it. And, and, War- awesome. and Warney did a good job too. You know, like he didn't get yeah. massive oh. wickets, but he kept built the pressure. Uh, it was probably a- his best tour to India as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was. And I think... The- well, it was because, um, like even over there, that's that's what they that's their country. That's their, their they play in their conditions. So even Warney in India, you know, didn't have the impact he had anywhere else in the world because of just they they could do that well. Um, so even nineteen ninety eight, the first experience of India um, was, I think, for me, was the other turning point in my career. Um, obviously, just having fun, getting chosen when everyone happened um, inconveniently, I guess, to be injured. I think. You weren't injured, but I know Pistol was, Dizzy was. Yeah. Uh, no, sorry, um, McGrath was. McGrath, was myself, yeah. Self and Pistol. So McGrath, um, Paul Rifle um, was selected and Paul Wilson and Adam Dale were the four quicks. Yeah. To play, we had Gab Robertson, Stuart McGill and... Warning. Uh, no, and Warning, yeah. Yeah, so three spinners and that's how we're going to do it. Um, we... And that was it. You're playing against a Tendulkar, and he was just unbelievable, wasn't he? Because I know you came over for the one days, didn't you? Yeah, I actually end? got there for the third test. You were there for the third test? Yeah. So oh. I was going to, I was going to play. Um, that's that's then, what I thought, yeah. And then, and then I, I was really crook. Um, and then you took your five for, and then we mm. um, won the final. You know, we had some great games, won the one-day final, yeah. Yeah, you know, the funniest thing out of that was that um, – the, the lesson I learned was when we, at the end of it, so they beat us and Java Srinath, who was there, obviously, gun bowler, senior bowler, I t- spoke to him before the game. I said, hey, Java how are you going? Just, you know, and a respect thing, as we do. Bowlers, respect. They already won the series. Anyway, I just said to him, I said, oh, mate, tell us about reverse swing. How's it, you know, how's it work? And he said, you have to keep the rough side of the ball bone dry. And straight away, it was like, ah, because... You'd bowl the ball, keeper gets it, throws it to the slip if you had one, to gully, to point, to cover, back to mid-off. Meanwhile, you've got, it's 40 degrees, you've got everyone sweating it up, the ball's being soaked on its way back and you're having to bowl with this ball and it's doing nothing. So straight away, I went back and said to the guys, said, this, is, this is what we have to do. Mucked around at training with it, but even at open game. So you'd end up, even I remember walking over to mid-off and getting the ball with two fingers, two fingers and getting two, the ball off with two fingers so we didn't get it wet. Because the thing is, you, you would sweat in an igloo. So yeah, we, yeah. we don't want you and Mer- we don't want your... <laughs> but we were really inconsistent with our plans in the Aussie team because remember we went through or we thought it was waiting. So you actually put heaps yeah. of moisture into it. So, you know, we, we were behind the game, weren't we, in regards to reverse swing? That was a bit Imran Khan went, I believe, in the late nineties when he played for New South Wales, came and introduced the spit rock, they used to call it. Yeah. Back in the day. It was, it was waiting weight on the, the shiny side, real weighting. And that was the, the heavy, but it's not that at all. It's actually air pressure on the rough, is how it works. But the, the the outcome out of that day, my big takeaway was the day before the game. Right, the day before the game, and Sachin scored a you know like so many runs, hundred every innings, and it was just on fire. And it was hot. I had lost about eight and a half kilos yeah. of body weight, um, which means I should can't wait till this COVID lifts up and get back there. And, 
<laughs> Anyhow, um, so anyway, all of a sudden we're training the day or two days before the game and around the boundary, all of a sudden it was like an oasis, wasn't it? It was all of a sudden it's yeah. Dennis Lilly. The greatest fast bowling resource of all time is there. He's at uh, Chinnaswamy Stadium in Bangalore. He's going to solve all the problems. So I went to him, Flem. I actually said um, the classic thing. I was and went up and said, "Hey, you going, mate?" And the first thing he said was, "He goes, oh, how how hot is it?" And it's like, "Yeah, it's pretty hot here." So the next thing he says, "Oh, how flat are the wickets?" Must point out that Dennis Ali never played a Test match in India. No. But then I said, I just said to him, I thought, here's the opportunity. You've got to use him. There's a resource he is. I said, Dennis, is there anything? Have you seen Tech Tendorki and watched his technique? Is there anything you've spotted there that you think that we should actually go for? Can you can you help me out? Have you got anything for me? He looks at me. He looks skyward, rubs his beard, comes back and says, nah, mate, just make sure you walk off with pride. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon he said two other words in there, and that there might have been, said, but maybe not for yeah, yeah. G, G rated or what are we? No, I, I reckon his first response was he pondered. So we're going, we're going to get gold here, and he goes, "Good luck." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. I reckon, and, Good luck, and then he said that last bit, and we're just going, "Oh my god, how are we going?" Yeah, so if the greatest follow time doesn't have an answer but the thing was my other takeaway from that i can't remember if you remember phlegm said to him said what about viv how'd you you know attack viv he said how do you contain viv he said you can't he said you just got to attack them and hope it's your day yeah yeah and and, and, and dennis was hmm. always attacking wasn't he like and um and and he never gave up i mean it's amazing how many of his fifers yeah were over a hundred runs do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but, yeah, but he yeah. bowled a lot of overs and he kept going and he kept, you know, instead of getting, you know, two for, you know, 120, it was five or six for, and then the next dig's four or five down. But I, I do yeah. remember that, you know, we we were looking for some answers. And yeah. and, 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 it, <laughs> and in hindsight, it was a great answer, as in, yeah, you've got to find your own methods. It's, it's a Crabby, what about we uh, we love lording? The fast bowling cartel. We're, we're yep. members. We're, we're running the, the the cricketing world these days. Um, what about some thoughts on um, your fast bowling cartel colleagues in the Aussie team and the Queensland Bulls? Yep, yep. Just before we start, I'm going to, have to um, I'm going to put a claim in here. Oh, um, geez. That I'm actually responsible for the term cartel. <sighs> And the reason being, we were away on a tour and I was reading, or well, it was during the Australian summer, but we were reading the news and it was always been the fast bowling union. Yes. It was always the union. Um, look after each other in the union and all that sort of stuff. Mike Whitney in my yeah. first season sat me down and told me with over a six pack in the dressing room that, you know, the union and it just told me all about it. So we got to look after each other. Anyway, the union was there, but the union started to just get a little bit frayed around the edges um, when professionalism come in, perhaps. Yeah. Anyway, at the time, I was reading, um, there, was, there was a bit of um, media around uh, Smorgans, I think, or was there, there was a, the, um, Smorgans was one company, but there was the, um, the cardboard box companies, and they were referred to as a cartel. And I thought, well, that's an interesting term because there was two yeah. major players um, and they called it cartel. And so a bit of research was that cartel controls the market, who enters, who goes. And I thought that is perfect. So I will claim that it was myself and I, I dare say with probably with Dizzy just to shoot it past him yes. and see what he thought. And then um, to this day, from stuff. There. so, yeah. So I'm going to say that um, I'm all over the, the cartel for, for obvious reasons. The... I think that the thing about the fast bowling cartel, um, yeah, like when I first played cricket for Queensland, um, Jeff Thompson was my coach. Carl Rackham was in the team. I had yeah. uh, Craig McDermott when he you know, wasn't in the Australian side. He was there as well. So I had all these iconic fast bowlers. And certainly from a Queensland perspective, even Dirk Tasler was my first roommate. What a one. The old left arm swinger. Just an awesome bloke too, and I think that's one of the prerequisites to being part of the, the, the fast bowler. You know, there's a there's a there's a the good bloke test, um, yeah, and which also is part of the selection criteria. Anyway, yes. um, yeah, and you found that you found that we 
yeah, they're just you had know, as a resource and there was an element of sharing, you know, and helping out each other um, the whole way through. I'd like to think we maintain that in my time in Queensland um, and, you know, to this day, it, it's sort of still happening. But also in the Australian team um, with the yeah. blokes that, that we played with and had the opportunity to. Um, you spend so much time um, with guys on, you know, it'd be during matches, on tours, getting to know guys so well. And so you get to know their buttons as well, what to press, yeah. what not to. Um, yeah. But I think that's it. It's seeing people, you know, and for the good of the team, everyone going well. So that's 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 what existed. Um, and from what I've seen and chatting to the guys today, um, it's still going strong. It is. It is. Um, and we still have our catch-ups, don't we? You know, generally at one test match a year, yeah. uh, the president, you know, Glenn McGrath will make a bit of a speech. He was treasurer. Yeah. Um, special guest, doing a good job. Well. Always, always have a special always, guest. I've always managed to get a special guest along too. Um, oh, Carl Rackerman was going to be hard to beat. Big knocker. They they, they loved his rule. But hopefully, COVID um, safe. We might have the opportunity to do it this year during the Ashes. Well, last Ashes, I think mm. the English fast bowling <laughs> members. We we we'd had about twenty beers, <laughs> and they walked in, didn't we? Something like that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're into that. Right. Hey, mate, what about um, we talk about the best grounds you played at? What about worst grounds? Oh, that's that's without a doubt. Um, 1998. There was a one day game. It might have been the first one day game we played after that test series um, when Sachin was belting the ball everywhere, oh. scoring hundreds everywhere, um, and it was Coach in um, yeah. down oh. south, south. I'm sh- oh, I I'm shut out west. Yeah. Well, to the point, and you know, I'd managed to, I said, lost all that weight earlier on um, pre tour. It was the most incredible. It was hot. It was like 40 plus degrees. And I remember before the game saying to yeah. um, walking out there, and we got to know the other players, and Mohammed Azruddin, the Indian captain, obviously having played three tests against them and, you know, the whole tour that we spent a couple of months, which just sort of saying to him, I said, mate, this is too hot. This is, this is crazy. What's going on? And he said, we should not be playing. Now, the Indian players, I think, would have warmed up on the ground for, what, 15 minutes? Not Jeff, even that. Not, what did Jeff Marsh have us doing? We, we, we did a training session, didn't we? It, felt, it was a full training session. Yeah. Um, yeah. And these are the days before you had sports science and, and isotonic drinks and all the rest of it. We had water. We had um, Sprite. We had Coke and Thumbs Up, which thumbs is the, up. an Indian version of Coke, it's a cola, but we quickly call it thumbs down, didn't thumbs we? Thumbs down. Yeah. Well, I remember the day before, and I'd come, I'd just caught a bit of a flu, and then I was getting over that, but I just remember I've got unfit all of a sudden, you know, because mm. we, we trained hard the day before too. But even in the yeah. warm-up, remember we're running, and the Indian <laughs> players were sort of walking out, having a sip, little hit, and walking off, and we were going, oh, look at them, they're soft. We, uh, we'll get them today. No, they're not soft. They were smart. That was, yeah, um, that was smart, but right. when did you think you were in trouble? Because you were the first cricketer I ever thought was going to photosynthesize on the field. <laughs> like you actually forgot yeah. how to run, almost didn't you? Like you just collapsed. I, I didn't. I didn't go on the. I didn't fall on the ground on the on the deck on the ground. But what happened was that we actually bowled. I think I bowled three five overs straight, um, and yeah. I, we even got uh, yeah some five overs straight. Um, and then I remember feeling out on the fence and not being able to breathe. I was actually like this, not being able to get any air into lungs. And, of course, it's, you know, and sort of all starting to get a little bit panicked about this, thinking, oh, I can't breathe. And anyway, I gave it an over, two overs or something like that, trying to just do it. And I went, remember just going up to Steve Waugh. There was a point. I sort of jogged up to him. I said, oh, Steve, i just got to go if I can't breathe. And he just looked at me. He's gone, get, get off. <laughs> and I remember going off the ground and uh, Errol Alcott has just got me ripped my clothes and it just put me in an ice bath and just dunked me in this whole bath, full body in this thing. I was in there for, you know, for a while, felt like whatever. And then I said, right, I'm, right, I'm good. I went back out on the field. Yeah, I remember you coming back on. I've gone exactly yeah, yeah. the big fellas back. <laughs> get me out there again. Get me out there. Anyway, I remember getting back out on the field. And then, and then you know, Steve Wall said, okay, you're right to bowl. I said, yeah, mate, give it to me. You know, I remember bowling three balls. I reckon three balls. Then all of a sudden, it just kicked in and my head was spinning. I couldn't see. And I thought the only way I'm going to get through this is a short run. So I ended up, 
I think I had about, it was probably about, I don't know, I mean like 15, 20 steps to an all run. I ran off about, I don't know, seven steps. And I remember trying to muck around and trying to keep the fun happening. I remember with the ball in the hand, but with, I think, my left hand, um, like a jockey, I was trying to pull out the persuader, the, the, the whip. No, you were doing like, that. You were doing that. <laughs> trying to pull out the shillelagh and just kick, but kick it on But we're not in on the joke. We're just going, he's lost it. I oh, know. <laughs> But the, the, the part of that, there's a couple of, couple of things about that. The real takeaways for me were going and you sent straight off the field, straight away. So I was off, bang, gone. Yeah. Um, I remember getting on the bus and I think Ricky Ponting, is it Pata or Marto might have vomited on the bus. Just, just, split, yep. just to be. Punter, yeah. Yeah, punter on the bus. Um, I remember going back to the hotel room and I had this awesome roommate. Um, oh, it was actually to have him Fleming. Um, going back to the room and in amongst the, the channel, whatever it was, but the Bollywood theme music in the background in the room, I remember lying down in my bed and sort of not being able to move, but then all of a sudden just crying. I was just, I was just crying and I just couldn't help it. I said, I don't know what's going on, mate. And you've looked at me and I think you just, did you get hooter once again at physio? Oh, and I just said, got on to hooter. It was like being Billy there, but it, you were just so disorientated, like you had no control over yourself. So I, think I, like, I think what I needed was a, a, a ham and pineapple pizza and a, and a chocolate milkshake or something like that. So and maybe a bit did we go one of those that night? Back. No. no. <laughs> but I, I do remember that we, we travelled next day, played the next day in 43 degrees. Um, I, oh, think I think you did get a rest, I, but it was like oh, in this day and age, you'd be <laughs> four or five days off. But um, yeah, a month. But I remember Hoot come in and, you know, it, it, obviously it was a lot, but I was bloody worried about you. But it, it was funny how yeah. early on it was more about, oh, I've got unfit all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, so I, I, was I no, actually no better place. Up. Yeah. No better place to so pass heavy. away, is it? But no better oh, place to pass been. away than playing cricket for Australia. Well, Surely I mean, there's. Rem- remembered just so well. But I, I, I the other thing I remember <laughs> is. Um, <laughs> Well, a couple of things. I bowled seven extras, so not only did I have to bowl ten, I bowled an extra seven. <laughs> and then in the last over, I looked up, I actually bowled seven balls. The umpire didn't count them. Uh, and I remember oh, getting man. off, and it was like I jumped in a pool, like I was squelching yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. much, and I just couldn't move. Yeah, you know, you're, you're moaning on the, the thing. Mardo bowled nine <laughs> balls and was vomiting in the shower. I can't bat and... <laughs> Steve Boy's going, oh, you're going to have to bat. Work and then I reckon you, did you get, did you get Satchin out? I did get him out for less than 20 runs. I, I got to look at the game, but um, the, the no, irony, I'm, and that's, that's the irony of that match, isn't it? That um, he got man of the match in every test match and all that. We managed to get him out for like less than 25. Man so of the match. Thought the, the great man can have a bad day. Man of the match, Sachin Tendulkar. Yeah. What do you get? Five, five for 25 or something yeah. bowling. Leggies and offies, and it's just, yeah. That yeah. was the irony, wasn't it? I reckon that you got was. him out for under five. And Might have been, like, too. Well, at least, he can, at least even the great man can have a bad day, bad luck. Yeah, he picked up five for man of the match. And the other irony I looked up, it was actually on April Fool's Day. <laughs> oh, really? If that's somebody's oh, joke, crap. Oh, wow. That's it. That's not, hey, not so funny. A, a, another little <laughs> bit of a serious one. Do you, do you have, um, besides walking out on that field that day and coaching, uh, any regrets for your career? To be honest, no. I think, I oh know, every okay. single time I got on the field, you gave it absolutely everything. There was nothing left in the tank. I wasn't leaving things to chance. But I guess if there's one, if there's one thing I would have, you know, I would have loved to have done more than anything on the cricket field, is is scored a test fifty, a test hundred of course, oh. but just a test fifty because I think there's a there's a couple of smart asses out there that just they're not easy bringing no. up just just keep bringing up the facts at every chance they get um, at the fast um, filing cartel meeting. <laughs> no, that's, that's not an, official, meeting, not an official meeting. Not an official meeting. You and know just, where you could have got lucky was in uh, two thousand one tour. I, I was. Mm. Uh, Central to getting raising the ball, you know, for Pfeiffer, you know, yeah, so well, that, yeah, got over, right. yeah. that got yeah. over the line. And then my next one was if you're batting nine, 10, or 11, if you score 25, you should raise the bat. 
And I remember. I, I, yeah. I didn't get I didn't get ground swill for that one. Steve Ward poo pooed that one. But if I had, you would have been able to raise your bat once. That's right. And along, along with my uh, Weatherall or Rounder of the Year award in county cricket, absolutely. I think my average in in first, in first class cricket's about seventeen. What's yours? I, I don't even worry about it. Was, it was about the baggy green. Oh, was average that? nineteen? Yeah, average <laughs> nineteen. <laughs> Hey, mate, just about teammates. Did you have yep. uh, someone, an underrated teammate, the highest maintenance teammate, mm. and uh, the most enjoyable or funniest teammate? Um, oh, look, I, I'd spent my whole career, um, and his, you know, my best mate is Andy Bickle. Yeah. Uh, and the irony is, I actually was competing <laughs> with him all the time. Yes. Um, so when Bick moved down to Brisbane from Laidley, which is about an hour and a half um, uh, west of Brisbane, he's moved down here with his Bickle Prickle shaved head with a little tuft and, you know, he didn't have any tattoos. Bick's never had t- uh, tattoos. He looks strikes. He'd come across back in the day. His nickname was Mad Dog. Yeah. Everyone would call him Mad Dog because he'd do his circle work at the top of his mark and steam in and, and snarl and do all that. Anyway, um, he came down and and it's, it's, the irony is, is that, um, yeah, so he came and lived with me. So at the time, I actually introduced him to my wife, Lindsay, actually introduced him to his wife. Um, I was, uh, <laughs> we're the best men at each other's weddings. He actually lives about 100 metres down the street, would you believe, from where I live now. So, and, and, and it makes no sense for a lot of people, I think, and certainly no batsman would understand this, that I reckon our relationship is, was what helped us out to get the best out of each other the whole way through. Because yeah. when I was in the team and not getting wickets, he was playing shield cricket, getting wickets, and then I'd get dropped and he'd come in. And then when he wasn't playing and not getting wickets, I'd be getting wickets to Queensland and then I'd come in. And over that whole time, and I think there's that great fear, that thing with, with fast bowlers. Um, certainly was with, with us, I think, is that, you know, respect is that, you know, this yeah. is not easy. This is not easy what we're doing and, you know, you're supporting each other. So, you know, I'd say that. Um the other one too, I think the other, and it's going to keep it to a bowl of theme here, is McGrath. This Glenn McGrath was just, for me, just an absolute hero. And to be able to play and be a mate with someone you, you sort of admire so much and yeah. for what everything he's done, it just, it, it, it's just, we're the luckiest people to do. Not only just live our dream with and get a baggy green, but also the people we've actually been able to knock around with. And I suppose and the reason, Pidge... You know, he was the terminator because of all the great players we played with, for me, mm. he's the greatest. Yeah. I'm not saying he had the most spectacular game, like a worn leg spinner, Gillies mm. hundreds at a strike rate or great catches, ponting number three, winning, setting up series in the first couple. But yeah. he, had, he, he had no natural predator, <clears throat> McGrath. He was the predator. His record at home and away in... in um, on all oh. different grounds, yeah. the average is about the same, low twenties. Whereas all those three other guys, the Steve Wars and mm. Mark Wars, yeah, you know, there was countries where they struggled against, but not McGrath. No, and that's the thing: the difference between his good day and his bad day was was nothing. You know, this you wouldn't know. That the, the the way that I think he's that makes him just such an incredible person um, was the fact that, well, for lots of reasons. First, first of all, the fact he came um was when i say identified he played a game of cricket up in a country cup you know, game in new south wales western northwest new south wales somewhere yeah and someone up there was it brad mcnamara or someone said oh i think it was doug walters dougie it was doug it's okay well doug said come on down come on down to city play great cricket um sutherland they'll give you accommodation so he's come down off his own back you know not country kid um I was going to say, oh, not many life skills, maybe, in city life skills. Sorry, oh, city life skills is probably a better I, way to put it. I, I still I, I question that to this day. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think that's for him to go down and be living in a caravan um, on his own and play club cricket and just was just extraordinary. So, and just his journey. But the fact of the matter is... Um, Great story. You know, well, even just with Jane, right? Jane McGrath. Um, and living with that for the two of them, the fact that she beat cancer twice, you know, and, and went through everything there and all that hardship. I'll give you a good example. Every single time you'd, you'd see McGrath is, hey, go on, mate, just out of manners. And his response every single time was never better, mate. Yep. 
never better. Even to the point the day after um, he stepped on that ball, day one, Edge Baston Test Match 2005, he's turned up the next day, he's walked in with a big black moon boot, right? Yeah. Over his, he's walked in with crutches and all that, and I, shit, mate, how you going? Never better, mate. I've never felt better. Did you and feel you guilty, know. you know, putting that ball in his path, though? <laughs> <laughs> You still haven't answered it. And you were on the tour group, weren't you? So maybe it was, maybe there's <laughs> something a lot evil, more evil. Um, were you the fanatics or something like that? Or I don't know. No, he was the last, he would have been the last player I wanted out. I, want, yeah, I wanted a five mil. Yeah, yeah exactly. Lords for me as a spectator, that, that win there was one of the great uh, yeah. sporting experiences as a fan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But and that's the thing with McGrath is that, um, it just leaves positivity at all stages. As much as he he's loses his rag, he loses his rag in the um you know the dressing room, but things didn't work out for him. But it was just mainly consistent. mainly with his batting. That was the yeah. thing, wasn't it? He, he took it so seriously. <laughs> hey, talk about positivity. Can I, uh, what about worst worst teammate oh. to be running the rock box, playing the music oh, in the room? Look, it's, it's, it's take your pick for a, a, a top six batsman. In yeah. any team, generally, um, Michael Slater at least had an element of of a sort of a, a Bon Jovi. At least there was some yeah. sort of like guitar, Green in there, heavy guitar. Yep, he he didn't mind that. Slats was pretty good like that, but he did control that rock box. You just had to really keep an eye out for, say, uh, a Justin Langer or more, even worse, Matthew Hayden. No, I think. Because Matthew Hayden had put on all sorts of things. Like there was uh, Graham Connors, uh, who was a country singer. Cyclone Season was a big one he used to love. Oh, now there's remember. one. Well, Langer, Justin, he had he loved that Jesse song. Yeah. You know, talk about a lost girlfriend and a lost cat. And it, it's uh, Joshua <laughs> Caddison, wasn't it? Jesse. Worst yeah, song lost, I've ever heard. Lost, lost identity, I reckon, is what it and was I, about. And yeah. I hate us to just listen to that 1970s country music. We've just won yeah. a test match. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, uh, look, I, I didn't mind getting in a country occasionally, mate. And I think with um, John Williamson. Um, yeah, Steve yep. Waugh. Steve Waugh, yeah, you'd respect that. He was, you know, whatever he wanted, we, we got it. But I just remember even <laughs> the rock box was a classic. I, when I first made the Queensland team, must have been the second year or so, it was 19, yeah, 1991. 1991. 1991, the reason why I know that is that this is the 30th year anniversary of Pearl Jam. Boom. 10. The first Boom. CD. 30th anniversary. So I'd actually heard Alive the first time and I thought this is the greatest song I've ever heard. Um, and then there was, I, even, I think I even splashed out, Lash didn't get the cassette, but I actually got it on CD. That's we cutting were, edge in 91. I was earning big bucks in our match payments back yeah. then too. I was, I was living at home, mind you. But um, the CDs were actually twenty nine ninety nine, which was quite yeah. expensive. And L- well, LP was nine ninety nine. Well, I saved money. Like I said, I was living at home still, and so <laughs> <laughs> for house and board. Um, so I, so the thing was, I actually thought I built up the courage. Young bloke, you know, the rock box, someone kind of left it unattended, a bit like a, a, a gap in a, a, you know, on a football field. You sort of see a half a gap and I'm going to take it. I'm going. I'm in. So I put it down there. I put a live on there. I'm just hoping, you know, you, you want to sort of like really get, you know, connect to people in the team and show some initiative and all that. And all of a sudden, I, a lot, you know, a live's going on. Da, 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 da. Anyway, all of a sudden, I had Carl Rackerman just get up, walk over to it, and he said, this is not music. It is to be called music. It needs a rhythm and a beat. This is neither. And then just stop. So <laughs> the best part about that rock box, Fleming, I think I did contribute um, to your book, actually, uh, Biology. You did? I did. Um, and that's the way I recalled at the time was that um, out of all those boy bands that we used to get, you know, the NSYNCs and uh, who else they were. Backstreet Ed, Boys. Josh, Backstreet Boys, Joshua Cattison, and even Bon Jovi for that matter. Where the hell are they now? Yes. Gold Jam. Oh, we've got, oh, who else? We've got, well, well yeah. AC, they're, DC, right. AC yeah. they're all, all our yeah. guys are still rocking and Food still. Fighters. And, you know, the best part about it, just like a fast bowler, they're adapting their skills and adjusting their skills to suit the conditions. Yes. Yeah. Have and you heard what, that last Pearl Jam CD? It's awesome. 
No, it's all good. And this is what I think the fast <laughs> bowling cartel, you know, that you've, you've given a lot of insights for, for young fast bowlers here today. But one mm. is listen to hard rock. Um, so my young, my son, Ed, um, Ed Kasparovich, he's 14. He's a fast bowler. He comes in, bowls quick naturally. Um, he gets that from me. But the best part is he actually gets the aggression from his mother. So he's got all the Ooh. tools. So yes. he, um, so when he was 12 years old, um, the Foo Fighters were playing here in Brisbane at Suncorp Stadium. I managed to get hold of some tickets, um, and I thought, as a, a learning experience, be a good father bonding experience with his son. Took him to the Foo Fighters concert, and he was singing along with Dave Grohl, oh. and yeah, lo- and loving it. So that's good but parenting, I, isn't it? It's almost first class cricket there. I mean, we yeah. could get into the Kiss concerts that we've been to. Um, yeah. <laughs> and all, all in, in all regards to that. Yes. Um, hey, mate, we've got some questions. First up, yeah. you have on social media, this is from a Lindsay Kasperwitz. And the question is, is it true you won't, that's you, won't shave your beard because someone said you look like Bradley Cooper once? Oh, look. No, that's, that's not true. Uh, that's true it's because she paused. No, it's not true because it's been said more than once. Are you, ha, can you confirm that? How, what, why? Um, oh, there was a couple of joints, a lot of places actually. Um, was a, I was once on a plane. It's been, um, yeah, I think, yeah, no, it's been it's happened a couple of times. So, Well, a Stuart whilst, Law whilst, also whilst said, it's... no, he's Jok- <laughs> Jokovic. Jokovic. Well, maybe that's it. Maybe well, whilst Djokovic doesn't grow a beard, um, yeah, I can sort of stand out a bit. I think Jocker looks more like Simon Cadditch, actually. There's a bit of that. There's mm. a bit of that. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. mate, yeah. hey, Crab, been great to catch up. Uh, just <laughs> final, what, what's your last sort of advice, particularly for fast bowlers getting yeah. into pre-season? And what would you say to them? Oh, I reckon I reckon just that piece around um, having fun because um, it's <laughs> the, the big thing about being a fast bowler is you've got to appreciate pain. It's going to hurt. Yeah. There's times. And the, the part around pain, I'm going to say, is that um, it, there's good pain and bad pain. And as a fast bowler, there's going to be days when you, you get absolute excruciating pain around your body. But it has this remarkable way of disappearing to the point yeah. where I actually started calling it and came up with the, the term the niggle worm. Um, that every single time you bowl, today it might be my left ankle starts hurting, and then all of a sudden you keep bowling and disappears. To, for the next day to appear in my right shoulder. Um, yes. And the thing is, as you get older, um, that worm ends up the size of a python, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but I think that's, and I've actually expressed that a couple of times to some some young fast bowlers. And I had one guy from the UK come out, uh, Maurice Chambers. And I remember I said that the first thing I said before his first game for the University of Queensland, that, you know, about this, he's gone out the bowl and he said, Casper, you know what? He said, that's true. What you said about the niggle worm, it's true. I said, is it? What happened? He said, well, I came in a bowl and for a third ball in, he said, I thought I tore my rib off the bone. He said, but I kept bowling. And then all of a sudden it, 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 was, it was fine. Now, I don't want to go against bowling workloads. I don't want to go against um, the latest medical advice and all that. I'm not encouraging everyone to bowl to your But snap. do it. Yes. But, <laughs> but, but, but I think the... I think the other the other thing I really really want to sort of stress is that um, conveniently there's pain is the biggest lesson um, perception is the other one we talked about yeah and the third P I'm going to leave you with the big three P's is possession or ownership of your journey um, you can't leave anything to luck um, there's so many things that's going to affect your performance that you have no control over the pitch the weather umpires you know all have an effect on my performance as a bowler, it can, you know, and selectors will drop me again. And But you can't actually rely on luck to, to happen. And you just, the, the, the quicker you decide and you own, realise it's the ownership, the position of my journey, um, and, you know, and whatever happens, happens, um, the better. Because you don't want to get to the end of your days and just kick cans and blame people or blame anything for the fact that, um, yeah, put it this way, yeah, that you didn't make it or it didn't, it didn't work. And at the end of the day, if you didn't have fun, it's your own fault. So what you're saying is be the chairman of your game and good luck in your role as chairman of Sports Corp. Good luck with the Thanks, smart mate. ball. 
hopefully this is the start of um, you know a massive um, insight into yeah. uh, what bowlers do with the cricket ball, um, the pace, the spin, the revolutions and everything like that. But Casper, mate, loved your work over the years and uh, we'll catch up soon and we'll finish with the, the Dennis Silly salute. Love you too, Flynn. Thanks, everybody. We'll catch up next week. Thanks, Casper. <laughs>